oh i i i guess that it needs at least 6 to 8 months of time for me it was about 8 months of time i had personal commitments um, so and i had some uh, work level commitments as well so it took me about 8 8 months on weekends i wasn't able to prepare i can't devote more time over weekends but on weekdays i tried to be very meticulous and consistent of of uh, spending 2 to 3 hours per day after my work like sit from uh, uh, 7 to 9 or 7 to 10 so consistency is a key if you are going to leave leave up leave start prepare something and leave it and then restart again you are going to forget the things but never ever memorize or or or, or just you can say okay, okay i didn't understand this concept not even for one concept i didn't understand the concept i will memorize and i'll go for the exam no it's not going to help you out there are people as you are, you are aware of there are people who have failed with one one question may, may been wrong they have been failed in the exam so uh that might be any question right from any domain or from any 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 uh, heading so yeah so don't do that whatever i have written on a sticky note so that way i kept revising uh, my all the concepts during the day time as well so uh, just see through the concept have it at least like a one one word or one sentence on about the concept so that your your mind will keep on revising it so that you are not forgetting things when you are Hello everyone welcome to Sisa this much this is Aditya and today we have with us Shri Vidya who has recently qualified Sisa so Shri Vidya heartiest congratulations for qualifying the exam and uh, you know uh, before asking you any question how does it feel like clearing the exam in the first attempt yeah it, it was really happy thanks for the wishes aditya but uh, it was a long journey um, a long journey in the sense both effort and time so yeah it's really happy and i feel relieved that's 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 the one line i can say okay so can you please introduce yourself your background you know and what made you choose this certification Yeah sure um basically i was a software engineer so i have worked in software development and quality assurance earlier for about 4 years of time uh, when i was in india uh, then i relocated to us about 10 years ago so i had to take a sabbatical uh, for caregiving reasons and I, you know right we have visa issues in us for working and other stuff so uh, then i reentered into cyber honestly i wasn't aware what a cyber is all about i had my security plus certification and then i started to look for opportunities in cyber uh, by then i was just aware of the blue team red team and like slightly about the purple team but there was something called a grc uh, luckily i got into an apprenticeship into grc now i am into the role for the past 3 years um and then i was like um, when i was working on the grc field i felt i had to get specialized in one area it's like a it's like a vast field i had to get specialized in one thing uh, and i was working on more on the controls identifying deficiencies and taking up control testing stuff so by then one of my mentors and teammates he recommended me to look into cisa and gain some knowledge about the testing process and the auditing process that's how i started with the Uh, CISA examination and started to look into it. What what is there and what's the curriculum? How can I take it up? Yeah, it started all up all there. Okay, so uh, since you have also mentioned that you know you uh, you had the academic background of uh, having a degree in the in the software development, so did you feel like you know uh, expanding that uh, you know knowledge and you know getting into that kind of roles like? like what made you choose to get into the security grc uh, you know compliance kind of role and you know from from the because i have, what i have seen is that people normally who are working in a software development most of them even don't even know about these kind of yeah. you know roles this is what True. i have seen like you know when when we uh, talk about these certification they are not even aware about you know mm-hmm. uh, yeah so like do you feel there is much more demand for these roles maybe uh, i'm not sure but like as of now you 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 do you feel okay there is more opportunities in this field as compared to the you know uh, traditional software engineering and software development roles yeah definitely definitely uh, i feel there's a lack of awareness 
on on a partic- on this particular section of cyber security like nobody understand what is policy why we need policy why we need procedures why we need compliance uh, what we are going to look into an iso what we are looking in a soc 2 what's the soc 2 so these are the basic st- basic uh, knowledge that a, se- a person who wants to pivot into security needs to know but mostly they keep focusing on pen testing for example if you are going to take a cyber security boot camp they all start with linux programming uh, pen te- I, i don't say it's a wrong thing but there is also a subse- subsect of cyber security that's so important in an enterprise level organization uh, that's not been taken care of or that's not been spread across uh, so even when i was looking into uh, how can i get into a cyber security role i wasn't aware of it so i was focusing more on the soc analyst the security operations center analyst roles uh but i am into some some different soc right now i am into a soc 1 soc 2 uh, kind of operating roles right now so yeah definitely there are a lot more opportunity there's a better life work ba- work life balance here and uh but one thing i i would suggest for who whomever who wants to get into security they should keep learning anything that any case may be pen testing blue teamer or going to be a grc person anyone who is into cyber security needs to keep updating themselves both so uh, through certification or 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 through some blogs or through keeping uh, getting updated through the i'm sorry i'm just losing the words so uh, or through some uh, understanding the vulnerability current vulnerabilities or uh, what is the current status of things in the field or what is the current breach that's happening in this field so those kind of things are, are most important things to be known but definitely there are lots 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 of opportunities here in grc and it's it's definitely a good field for whomever who wants to get into uh, cyber without much of technical knowledge but i don't say no technical knowledge but not much much without much technical knowledge and not much with programming knowledge as well correct and in fact you know i think your you know uh, your traditional knowledge of whatever you have learned you know during uh, your uh, software development or whatever so those knowledge definitely helps you here also because when we talk about security you know we we normally talk after everything is deployed you know but we don't even think about security when the software is being implemented you know so uh, as we you know they they say sh- shift right to shift left right so uh, during the design phase itself you know what we can do to you know make yeah, sure that right, right. the system is secure by default you know by by design basically we say yeah, security ho- ho- by by design yeah yeah hon- honestly when i when i started with my csa preparation uh, i felt very easier on domain 5 who who most per- on which most persons feel very bad it's a tough tough domain or it's we need to put lots of effort on domain 5 but honestly i didn't spend much time on domain 5 it was like a cake walk for me might be my earlier skills or earlier background helped me out uh and also i have got more much how much higher score compared to the four domains on the domain 5 so uh, definitely it helped me out but but for the people who who wanted to get into cyber or who wanted to get into auditing um i'm not a full fledged auditor right now but then uh, who wanted to get into cyber or auditing definitely this is a good field to take it up and cisa is definitely a great certification to get into a, a taste of things in auditing and other stuffs yeah yeah so okay so my next question to you is uh how much time did it take for you and do you feel that you know the more experience you have the less t- uh, less time it will take for you to pass this exam because there is no prerequisite as such to you know like a waiting period okay mm-hmm. i mean you, you can register now you can give the exam next week you know so, so there is no yeah. waiting period so like uh many people you know especially experienced professionals you know they have these questions like can i give the exam in 15 days or one month you know so we we get l- those kind of questions also that uh, you know i i have knowledge and i have i have the experience so i don't think so it will be difficult for me to grasp everything and you know maybe i can just write the exam in one month so like what according to you should be the ideal time duration and how much time did it take for you personally uh i i i feel i can't suggest an ideal time because it depends varies from person to person and how they prepare or how much they, how much time they devote themselves per day or how they plan to take up the exam for your second question on a person who has 
uh, might be extensive experience in auditing it might be a cakewalk for them i'm not sure because i don't have that much of auditing experience but i had the software development experience earlier uh, but then though though they are going to have an extensive auditing experience i feel thinking like, thinking from an isaka way of uh, approach or answering from an isaka way of thing way of well, answering is like something different from your knowledge you gain from your um, hands on experience in your in your current role that's the way i felt for for few few questions though i had some experience in my current role that answers didn't uh, actually worked out for whatever that's been asked on the uh, qae or on the model exams whatever i i when I, whatever i prepared when, when i was preparing for cisa so i i i guess that it needs at least Six to eight months of time for me. It was about eight months of time. I had personal commitments, um, so and I had some uh, work level commitments as well. So it took me about eight eight months. On weekends, I wasn't able to prepare. I can't devote more time over weekends. But on weekdays, I tried to be very meticulous and consistent of of uh, spending two to three hours per day after my work, like sit from uh, uh, seven to nine or seven to ten so consistency is a key if you are going to leave leave up leave start prepare something and leave it and then restart again you are going to forget the things so definitely have a schedule stick to the schedule uh, be consistent follow the schedule uh, and don't worry if you are going to take a pause you can take a pause for a week but not more than that but i took a pause for a month because of my commitments i had but when then i when i restarted i felt i forgot everything so i started again from the scratch from domain 1 2 3 4 5 so uh, my my sincere advice would be have a schedule stick to it uh, follow it and if you are able to spend some time over weekends it would be really great and towards the close of my exam date i spent more than 6 hours over weekdays like for 5 days and weekends i spent more than 8 to 10 hours for about a month span so i am i am i'm not sure i over engineered things but that's that's how i prepare myself for any certification even for the early certification i had to devote myself for more time i had so much of notes everything uh, so yeah i think it's 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 a personal preference of how much time you will devote per day it it might take longer for you to take up the exam correct correct so you know there is a saying also the more you sweat during the training the less you bleed in the war yeah. so yeah i think uh, so as she has mentioned two points like you know you have to be consistent so that is very uh, honestly you know you know whenever i take any interview this is something very common like you know this is something which everyone agreed for like you know they they had to be consistent you know maybe in the start or maybe in the middle or you know towards the end but then uh, like they and and also one one more thing you know like uh, people also have stressed upon the importance of revision so do you feel that being consistent is good but then you know uh, revision also plays a very important role you know in passing this exam so do you feel uh, revision is important uh, yeah definitely definitely i would i would uh, emphasize the importance of revision or rereading or uh, retaking the video course of yours yours and uh, taking up notes a uh, handwritten notes is always be- be- always the best for from for from my perspective uh, i don't prefer uh, uh, anything with a keyboard or something because handwritten is the mo- is the i am an old school person but i think it's okay to be an old school in case of cisa i don't want to take any chance so definitely revision at least two or three times of revision uh, and using one or more resources i use i i used your resource and i used a book and i used qae as well so it's like a three three resources i used that way i felt if i'm going to miss some concepts or i didn't do an active reading as you used to say on your videos i can take that up from some other source so that kind of revis- uh, reading and revisiting the things and trying to uh, what to say uh, just just running through your mind of any domain if you can see oh i do i remember this concept what is the concept is all about will definitely help you to come back and see oh okay i have missed these much things in this concept so i have to read something else so but i don't i don't recommend anyone to start with the crm uh, it's really going to be uh, exhausting and uh, hard for anyone who is in an entry level uh, person in grc or in cyber to start up with the crm but definitely some other some some different uh, easier book 
might be if they want us to read something in the book it would be a better way to start with it and then if they want a video video course to be uh, supplement that book i think yours is the best no 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 other resource i use for the video material so they can start with the book and then go to a video material then start then go to the qae like it will be like a phases of preparation for them to get into the examination mode correct and you know if i'm not wrong i think you know uh, you have mentioned this in the past that you know uh, i since i have always stressed upon active reading and active listening and then you know you have told me that initially you you, you didn't understand like what's the importance of this and and how will this make any change but then when you were revising for a second or third time that time you have told that your understanding has changed like the, the yeah. when you when you were going through the first time that time things were different but when you went to the same thing for a second time that time you realized oh i missed this you know uh, while i was studying for the first yeah. time yeah. yeah right yeah so yeah what what i would rec- i would ask people who wanted to prepare for csis just watch your videos for domain 1 and take up the model test for domain 1 make your score then re- do the domain one for the second time and take up the exam again so what's your score and re- do it for the third time and take up the exam for the third time and what's your score so in that way yourself you can just judge yourself and okay i missed this much i missed this much in the second time i missed this much in the third time so okay when when you are if you are going to take up for the fourth time definitely you will get a 100 marks in that exam so you will not miss anything so it's like you have to judge yourself and see where you are standing for each for each revision or each time you are revisiting the concepts so that way it will help you to uh, make sure you are not missing anything or you are not uh, you are not feeling bad like oh i didn't read this properly i am not very sure about this question so it will give give you a lot of confidence when you do when you are going to do this kind of revision and uh, taking up the exams particularly you are model exams i am not specifying qae but i think qae is going to be a cake walk if they are going to take up your model exam uh, so yeah yeah okay so you know uh, the way you have mentioned that you know like going through like for example going through the first domain and then taking up the model test you know what i have seen is that you know most of the people you know they feel demotivated when they get less marks you know especially i think i remember i'm not sure you know because it, like whether it was you or someone else but i think i also received message from you also like maybe that you have given yeah. the test you were expecting more marks but you couldn't yeah. get so uh, okay how would you advise these people who gets demotivated very easily and you know maybe because then then i i say this thing like you know don't judge yourself you know uh, on the basis of just going yeah. through things first time you know everyone makes mistake you know it's yeah. not that you know you have learned something and now you'll sit and you will get 100 out of 100 it's not going to work like that no i guess it's not going to be like our school exams just prepare for lesson 1 uh, take up the fill in the blanks in the lesson from that's in the back of the lesson 1 and you will get 10 out of 10 in that lesson 1 questions no it's not going to work out for cisa so it's fine if you are going to yeah honestly yeah, even i felt very bad when i had a i think i took something 60 or 55 for the first domain exam i don't remember it right now but i felt bad because on i was taking simultaneously qae i was getting a very good score in qae but when i took your model exam it was really a low score for my for myself but then i said i i when i ping you said okay do a revision you might get a better mark so that's how i just had a revision of domain one then honestly when i took for the second time it was a higher score like 75 or 80 just for the second second time i was able to get a good score so uh, that's how we have to keep ourselves uh, improving or it's nothing to get demotivated the final goal is going to get to pass the cisa and it's not going to get a good mark in our model exam the model exam are just to get uh, you know where we are standing what we are missing how to improve ourselves or what what's what's the expectation of isaka or how we can think in isaka's way so that kind of uh, practice is, is going to help out in our model exam it's not going to be a final score so definitely yeah there's nothing to get demotivated there's nothing to uh, judge ourselves or there's nothing to lose but no it's we should keep keep motivated ourselves I, i know it's going to be exhausting honestly it's going to be really exhausting because the, the syllabus is vast and for a person with no hands on experience it's going to be really tough but how well we can take a break for a day or two and then we need to come back energize ourselves and get to know the uh, no 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 the no our goal and start working towards it so yeah 
yeah so guys she is example right in front of you so everyone goes through the same situation so you are not the only one right so instead of feeling demotivated or something like that you know you can just figure out you can just make uh, try to revise and then then see like you know how revision has made uh, like if it brings any change in your marks right so in your confidence and in fact uh, some people like you know in the last interview so she mentioned that you know like i mean it, it might not be applicable for you i'm just saying that you know for some people who are experienced in it audit sometimes they have to forget whatever they know in in their practical because you know for for a fresher it's okay like you know they, they just have to grasp new information but for people who are experienced things you are doing practically might sometimes not match with what best practices or what isaka expects from you right so they have it's to, like unlearning and learning unlearning, unlearning the isaka's way right ex- exactly so th- that that is also you know uh, not that easy and and you know so that also takes time and you know when you are solving a question also that time also you know sometimes you you'll feel okay no i do this thing you know in my office but sometimes you know you have to understand what what is expected from you and and that kind of uh, isaka's expectation or you know we say isaka's way of uh, thinking so that takes some time you know for you to develop right uh, yeah, and one more thing i would i would add here like don't memorize the concepts as people say uh, never ever try to memorize things either uh, from the crm or from the uh, resource whatever you are using because it's not going to help you to clear the exam because the questions are n- not going to be direct not even one question is going to be direct so you need to understand the concept you need to think in an isaka's way you need to split the questions you need to sp- get the core uh, keywords from that question so it's a different way of approach I- i'm not sure like how the other um, I- iisc square exams or other exams are like i haven't taken cissp or um other exams but for this one it's not going to be a direct quest direct way of uh, answering or it's not going to be a memorizing or d- just to t- uh, test your muscle memory it's not going to work out so never ever memorize uh, try to understand the concept if you didn't understand try to try to get it clear either from you or through the youtube videos or to any other resource they believe it's going to help them out but never ever memorize or Or, or, or just you can say, okay, okay, I didn't understand this concept. Not even for one concept, I didn't understand the concept. I will memorize and I will go for the exam. No, it's not going to help you out. There are people, as you are, you are aware of, there are people who have failed with one one question. May may been wrong. They have been failed in the exam. So uh, that might be any question, right? From any domain or from any 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 uh, heading. So yeah, so don't do that. Yeah. and uh, in fact you know uh, this might not be the most difficult exam uh, but you know the thing which makes this certification not that easy is the thing like it the syllabus is too vast and as an auditor you must have at least basic understanding of each and everything so that's why you know you will hardly find anyone who is who is expert in all the domains you will hardly find you know those kind of people so some people might have experience in domain 3 some people might have experience in domain 5 some people in domain 2 right so but as an auditor you must i mean they don't expect you to be expert in all the domains but at least the basic overview and understanding you must have right so this is the reason the syllabus is too vast and that makes is, uh, this certification slightly difficult but i'm not i wouldn't say that this is the most difficult certification or something yeah. like that and again this is very uh, like it, it differs from person to person this is a subjective opinion like you know the the, the difficulty level and you know yeah. so and so there are there are few questions you might face when you are going through qae or through your model exam we might not get convinced with the answers uh because i i you would have remembered i would have pinged you for at least 50 to 60 questions so i i didn't get convinced why this is the why this been the answer i feel that is the answer i don't get it convinced so that that there are questions we might not get convinced even before we take up the exam but that's how i said i expects us to answer so i felt i finally i got convinced for all those questions like okay isa isaka is expecting me to think that way so i have trained my brain to think that way and answer that way when i am going to take up the questions in the exam uh, so yeah definitely that, that that is the one key uh, strategy you need to practice when you are going to go to the exam 
think in an Isaac our way and answer in, in what they expect, not what we know or not what we have learned or not we have up, what we have applied. So it should be an Isaac our way of thinking and responding. Yeah. Yeah. My next question to you is, you know, uh, any tips you would like to give to people who are working professional and how to manage time? You know, this is, uh, you know, one of the most famous question, you know, when it comes to uh, passing these certifications, because people normally do not get time, you know, uh, because of their uh, personal uh, responsibilities, you know, their uh, especially people who work in big fours you know they have lots of work pressures and and sort of any advice you would like to give to these people who are facing this issue like you know they 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 are interested they are, they are they have the enthusiasm and everything but then somehow they are not able to devote time so as i said earlier consistency is the key at least if you are going to study for an hour per day for the next 60 days it's good just start with an hour it's, let it be 30 minutes but fine just start, start with 30 minutes. But you have to study for all five days, like five working days. If it's going to be a weekend, uh, I guess you, you need, I feel, as I said, I'm an old schooler, so you can, I, I feel over the weekend we need to sacrifice few things, not for a movie, not for an outing, for some time at least, for two or three months before our exam. We can devote two or three hours or weekends for the preparation. It should be good. And um, time management, it's all depend upon uh, person to person and it varies from person to person. Some wants to study in the early morning, some wants to study in the night. So I think it depends upon the person. But however, uh, have a schedule, uh, note down whatever you are feeling tough, re revisit it again or reread it again or try to understand the concepts. Uh, try to run it in your mind. Have your notes, have a sticky notes all around your table or wherever you are working. In. That way, it helped me out. So whenever I, when I, even though I'm going to work, for, I'm on my work, I just go and see through the concepts, whatever I have written on a sticky note. So that way, I kept revising uh, my all the concepts during the daytime as well. So uh, just see through the concept, have it at least like a one one word or one sentence on about the concept so that your, your mind will keep on revising it so that you are not forgetting things. When you are, suppose you are on domain five and, and then you will not you are not going to remember nothing on domain three, it's going to be really tough for you. You have to read all through it again. So just just revising it and seeing running through it through your mind should help you out. Yeah. All right. So I think you have answered all of our questions. Thank you so much for participating and sharing your journey and your experience with everyone. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Aditya.